Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Andy and you're watching the Opinionated Reefer YouTube channel. Today we're going to discuss something that a lot of the reefing community doesn't like to talk about. Reef tank energy consumption. Now I think this is a particularly relevant topic right now because in case you're not aware, the UK and Europe is currently going through a cost of living crisis and the price of household energy has skyrocketed. Now, I think this is presenting a real danger to the hobby, but a lot of people seem to be sticking their head in the sand and trying to ignore it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before I get into the ins and outs of reef tank energy consumption, I just want to give you some context so that you understand the scale of the problem that the hobby is facing in the UK. So this time last year, I was paying 14 pence per kilowatt hour for my electricity. I was with a company called the People's Energy, which in the grand scheme of things, were pretty cheap compared to some of the bigger suppliers. But unfortunately, due to an increase in the general wholesale price of energy, eh, that company went bust and I got shifted onto British Gas. Now at that point, my energy immediately jumped up to 19 pence per kilowatt hour. Now it turned out that that was round about the same level as the UK price cap at that time. So I just carried on as normal, thought no big deal, it's only a small increase. But then what's happened is energy prices have continued to rise and in April the government decided to put the price cap up to 27 pence. So that effectively doubled my electricity cost from when it was 14 pence six months before. Now, the energy price cap is something that the government uses to try and shield the general public from massive hikes in energy. It basically means that these companies can't charge you more than the maximum price, which is the price cap. So what's happened now is we've been warned that the government is going to put the price cap up again, another 64% um, this coming October. 64% and then it's going to rise again in January, which they reckon will push the average household UK energy bill to around £4,000 a year. Now, if you've got a reef tank, it's going to be considerably higher than that. I think my tanks are adding at least another 40% onto my bill. So, what's going to happen at that point? So now you see the full scale of the problem that the hobby is facing. There has already been three local fish shops that sold marine fish and corals that have shut down that I used and that was simply due to the first increase in energy prices. I've heard overall that 14 fish shops, most of them mainly selling tropicals, have shut down in Scotland already. And just recently I heard that one of the UK's biggest Coral wholesalers, PM Aquatics, have decided to shut down their holding facility as well. So this is only the first wave. Um, if the prices go up another 64% as predicted, I think it will be an absolute apocalypse for the hobby. Um, the whole entire network of local fish shops and suppliers is in danger of just collapsing. 
and the hobby will become a lot more niche, well, even more niche than it already is. Uh, only the, the most well-off uh, reefers are going to be able to absorb these kind of uh, price increases. Um, I mean, it's not only the cost of electricity, the cost of everything has risen. So a lot of people are just going to throw in the towel and think, nah, this is no longer worth it. Me personally, I'm going to try and persevere, but I'll just have to see how it goes. I just don't see this this going well for the hobby at all. Now, reef keeping is an expensive hobby at the best of times. And if you can no longer afford it, don't do it. I get that. But I think it's going to get to the point that there'll be, there will be so many people trying to give up the hobby this winter that there might not be enough uh, reefers left in the hobby to take all the fish and corals. And what's going to happen then? I guess time will tell. So what can we actually do to reduce the power consumption of our reef tanks? Well, the most obvious answer is get a smaller tank. Simple as that. Uh, the bigger the tank, the more expensive it is to run. There, there's just no getting away from it. So if you're really feeling the pinch, then you could consider downsizing. I did try that, but I just wasn't feeling it. So for me personally, I'm going to keep the Reefer 350, but I'm going to get rid of all other tanks. So I will be shutting down the SPS Nano and also currently have a quarantine tank set up. And the next three items to have a big impact on your reef tank's power consumption would be number one, your heater, number two, your lighting, and number three, uh, your return pump and any power heads you might have running. Everything else is kind of minor in comparison to those three. So as far as your heater goes, one of the biggest things you can do to reduce the cost of running a reef tank is actually to reduce the temperature of your tank. You can run a reef tank at 23 degrees Celsius uh, without any issues. There's no need to run a tank at 26 degrees Celsius. Um, you're just wasting money. Of course, this is just my opinion, but... I am currently running the Reefer 350 at 23 degrees Celsius and I have been running the Nano Tank at between 23.5 and 24 degrees Celsius for the last year and everything is absolutely fine. Corals are growing, fish are happy and healthy. Um, you would actually be surprised at how much energy you actually save over time especially on bigger tanks just by reducing the temperature you run the tank at the actual savings you could make just by reducing the tank temperature by a couple of degrees celsius could potentially be thousands of pounds um, over the lifespan of a tank if it's quite a large tank um, if you don't believe me, just get a power monitoring uh, plug that allows you to monitor how many kilowatt hours is getting used over a period of time and you'll see for yourself. Um, run it at your standard temperature for a period of time and then uh, reduce the temperature by a couple of degrees and run it for the same period of time. I think you will actually be surprised at the difference. The next obvious one is lighting. Now, if you're running T5s or, God forbid, halides, then you might want to consider uh, switching to LEDs. But I think most of you guys already have that covered. Uh, you're only really saving about 20 to 25% of power consumption when switching from T5s to LEDs, especially for me if I wanted to get the same sort of... Uh, coverage and spread is what the 6 times 54 watt unit I've got behind me does. But for comparison, I would need to buy, say, a minimum 3 XR15 Gen 5s or 6s to get that kind of spread. 
and it's just no worth the uh, cost for me, the upfront cost in buying the LEDs itself. Um, I only paid a hundred pounds for that uh, lighting unit second hand, and uh, the price of new bulbs. So for me, the energy savings doesn't outweigh the upfront cost of uh, buying the LED lighting. So I'll just stick with the T5s for the moment. But for the rest of you guys that have already uh, upgraded to LEDs, what I would do is consider reducing the time you're running your LEDs for down to, say, 9 hours. If you're running them at 12, reduce it down to 9 hours. You wouldn't want to go much lower than that for a reef tank. Um, you could also potentially lower the intensity a bit, but again, that might affect the, the growth of your corals. So for most of you guys already running LEDs, there's probably no much savings to be made there. The next thing on the list would be your return pump. Now, there's a mis misconception in the hobby that you need 10 times turnover. I've even heard 20 times turnover. The reality is, for your return pump, you don't need more than three or four times turnover per hour. Uh, your main source of flow in the tank should be coming from your power heads, not your return pump. So this could potentially allow you to downsize your return pump or even just run your current return pump at a much lower setting. Now I currently run mine at 40%. Um, and that is absolutely fine for my tank. With regards to your power heads, the only thing you can really do is perhaps run them at a lower setting. Like in my tank, two MP40s is overkill. So I'm only running them at a maximum of between 30 and 40%. A good trick with the MP40s is to run them in anti-sync mode. So when one of them is running at 75% of the set power, the other one is only running at 25%. So it's effectively running two power heads for the power consumption A1. So that's quite handy, but other than that, I don't think there's much savings to be had other than just turning them down. The only other things you could really do to reduce uh, power consumption would be to run things like your skimmer on a timer. Perhaps only run your skimmer at night. That would work probably fine on a lot of tanks. You could also do the same with like a UV steriliser. Um, you could also try running any GFO reactors or other reactors you've got off of a manifold from your return pump rather than having individual uh, pumps running the reactor. That might save you a few watts here and there. So there you have it guys, some tips on how to save power consumption on your reef tanks. But let's face it, there's only so much you can do and the reef keeping hobby is really energy intensive compared to any other pet related hobby that I know of. A lot of people complain about reptile keeping and how expensive that is. Reptile keeping doesn't have a, a patch on reef keeping as far as energy consumption goes. Um, plus you've got all your dosing liquids and supplements and everything else that goes along with it. So no much you can do guys. Let's just Hope that these uh, prices don't stay high for too long and the hobby doesn't collapse due to it. Don't like to be too pessimistic, but it's not looking good. So there you go, guys. I will catch you on the next one and hope you found this useful.